I'm Beth Mitchell, works for the Salt Lake County Mayor's Office. I'm Jen Palka, I run Code for America. And Jen is an old friend of mine, so we're very happy to get this chance to chat. Yeah. And um, I just wanted our viewers to know a little bit about um, what kind of the inception of Code for America, how you got interested in coding and, and kind of what the vision is you know, today and for the future. Well, I got interested uh, in government, which I hadn't paid enough attention to earlier in my life when I was running a conference called Web 2.0. This was when the web was sort of coming back after the dot-com crash. And um, uh, we were looking at the growth of Twitter and Facebook and Google. And at the same time, uh, we got a new president in 2009. And uh, we looked at the role that the, what we would call then Web 2.0 had played in electing this president. We thought, wait a minute, could these same principles and values of the participatory web really also help him govern better? Um, and I started uh, working on a conference called Gov 2.0 uh, after Web 2.0, and we started going to DC and seeing how tech projects were run in government. So half my life I'm with the Twitter and Facebook folks, and half my life I'm with government contractors, and you really couldn't see more contrast in two <laughs> things ever. Uh, and I realized that there was so much that we well, really both could learn from each other, and so much that we could do to make government work better, not just make elections be different and uh, campaigning different, but that we could really take these principles and values, apply them to government, and get people from the tech industry to care as much about government as they did about the latest app or the latest startup. So um, we decided to make it a surface year program. That's why the name sounds like Teach for America, because it was ripping straight off of that. <laughs> and uh, we got people from the tech industry to come do a year of service, working with cities like Salt Lake. Uh, and it's just, it's grown so much since then. It's, it's a whole movement now. It's a movement of people like you, people all over the country. Um, we're doing projects that help people who need help from government the most, um, and for whom we're spending a lot of money on these people, but we're not getting the right outcomes. Uh, and now we're, we're moving from just doing, you know, a project here and a project there to projects that'll serve every city, every county, every state in the country. And that's, that's real scale, that's really showing this working. That's great. And I think you and I worked together on one of those projects. We did work together right? on one of those projects. <laughs> so I um, want to give a little plug to ClientCom, yeah. which was um, when Salt Lake County was a fellowship, um, part of the, the Code for America fellowship group, yeah. um, which is really exciting because one of the things that we are doing is um, now have a Code for America started um, with us, ClientCom, which is, um, I would call it a web-based case management yeah. tool um, that allows very securely for case managers in uh, Salt Lake County currently, but ultimately, hopefully far more broadly, um, to keep track of those people who are in criminal justice and to help them um, get through supervision yeah. uh, in a better way and get them back to their lives. And that's something that sort of we partnered on. So um, one of the things that I think that uh, is relevant in this conversation is how can we attract um, the kind of tech talent Right. to government. So well, we did it for a short stint and we yes. want to keep doing it. Well, the, what, what attracted tech talent to Salt Lake was that you were doing so much amazing stuff already. You've been doing um, the work to look at the data, to identify the people who need it, to really understand what the problem is. And you should talk a little bit about that. What have you done around surfacing these super utilizers? Because that is what makes it for an interesting problem that then tech people want to come solve. That's how that's how they've come and that's how they're going to keep coming. So talk a little bit about that. Um, well, we partnered with the uh, University of Chicago, Data mm -hmm. Science for the Social Good, because we realized we really wanted to get a handle on what people were in the criminal justice system mm -hmm. that also had overlaps with behavioral health and mm -hmm. um, addiction and substance abuse. And um, they sort of found this you know, the overlap between these circles. And we've actually identified within Salt Lake County a deduped list of um, 1,867 individuals. 1,867. Individuals just within Salt Lake County yes. who, um, you know, in the past, I think, two years mm -hmm. have, have had touches 
in all of these areas. And yep. what we're trying to do now, again, with data science for the social good at University of Chicago, is to add uh, homeless data to this. So mm -hmm. data from the very difficult, sometimes to access HIMIS system. Mm -hmm. And I think that, again, this would be another area in which tech can sort of overlap with policy yep. and do that sort of iterative design that you and I have both talked about um, and sort of agile policy making, which is to say, how do we look directly at the data and help these people and then assess whether our interventions are changing the data. And this thing that you're doing here is the same problem that kind of every city in the country has. You've identified these 1,867 exactly. people <laughs> um, that uh, are getting bad outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. And um, are costing your city a lot. Uh, and when you've been able to do that, once you see the problems, then you can start to solve them, right? Precisely right. So that's what attracts talent. <laughs> that's what attracts tech talent. And, and you're going to get so much more of it because you've been able to show that. That's what uh, my husband once said to me. It's like, you know what geeks want? They want an interesting problem. <laughs> <laughs> You've got lots of those. Yeah, absolutely, a ton. So one of the things I'll point out about that project um, is that uh, it's web-based, um, but it's meeting those people where they are. They, uh, your, your, um, your probation officers need to be able to use the web, um, lightweight, easy way, not installing anything to communicate, but they're communicating with the people um, who are on probation by text message. And that's something we see everywhere, is you've got to meet the people where they are, right? So are, do you guys have plans to do that in other areas? What are you What are you doing next? We desperately want to. I think that the, the client comm model um, mm -hmm. of texting people and of having that sort of passive communication, because people who are often working in a case manager um, sort yeah. of relationship or having a difficult time linking up with clients communication-wise. Yeah. So as you said, text is essential. And um, we're looking now at doing rolling this out potentially within Salt Lake County, mm -hmm. within youth services, which also yeah. has um, is, is keeping track of like young people in kind of a juvenile crisis situation, mm -hmm. court or otherwise, and then also um, within our legal defense yeah. Um, within the DA's office. And we also have many other interested counties um, throughout the state of Utah. So it's really going to take making that compelling argument to get those relationships going and those data sets open. And I think Client.com can do that because um, early evaluations have told us that it's, a, it's kind of a game changer in terms of helping people through supervision. Yeah, it's amazing. So they get this um, communication that's when they need it, where they need it, and you get data that shows them, that shows you how to serve these clients better. Right. And so have you seen yet any examples of operations or policy changing because you had data about how people were actually interacting with your system? Absolutely. I think that one of the biggest things that we have learned about is there's always going to be a very, very small sector of people who um, are early adopters of technology. Mm -hmm. And these people can really, really help you to kind of change the hearts and minds yeah. and to um, we now are going to present some of this CJ, some of the data from ClientCom, mm -hmm. as well as some of the data from the super utilizers for the data science for the social good yeah. to the Criminal Justice Advisory Council, yeah. and actually have a starting point to talk about yeah. jail overcrowding, to talk about um, you know booking restrictions, to talk about um, mm -hmm. you know agency bookings by jurisdiction and what people are yeah. getting warrants for. It's really opening a conversation to why are people um, making contacts with criminal justice yeah. anyway. And how can we, you know, change that approach and, and work more on diversion? Because it's easy to get someone out of jail who was never there. Yeah. I, and this is so exciting, I think, because it really shows the progression of what I would call this movement, right? From, okay, government websites are bad. <laughs> uh, and in some cases, they don't work, as we know, to um, we, need, we, need, we need a better interface to we really need to use these principles, these practices, um, and at Coke Merrick, we, we say user-centered, iterative, and data-driven, um, really in all aspects of governing. It's, this isn't about tech for tech's sake, and it's not about the tech guys in the corner, tech men and women in the corner. Um, it's about policymakers, people who run operations, and tech people together, all those people who should be the the you know the all star team of governing working together to solve the problems right uh, a, a website doesn't solve a problem a group of people who understand the problem working 
in an iterative, data-driven, and user-centered fashion with a cross-functional team, that can actually solve a problem. And that's what it, that's what's so exciting about this moment is like we've we've gotten we past, figured that out. Well, we've gotten past the like the 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 shiny website and in and into these really deep problems that are that are really plaguing our cities.